lesson I have this morning is a very simple lesson. I had somebody to ask me the other day, he said, what are you going to try to speak on? And I told him, and he said, well, that's too simple. He said, uh, it's, uh, it's something that we know, and uh, really that uh, one scripture is, is, is about all you, you, you got to teach. Well, I, I think it's a little larger than that, so if it will help us this morning, I want us to think about the scriptural uh, teaching concerning planting and sowing. Or sowing and reaping is what I mean to say. Sowing and reaping. Uh, that truth is taught throughout the Word of God. It's simple to, and it's easy to understand. Children know about you're gonna, if you plant corn, you're going to grow corn. If you plant an apple seed, you're going to grow an apple tree. Uh, that truth is taught throughout all sowing and reaping. It even goes into the animated kingdom, which is the animals. Uh, bears produce bears. Cats produce cats. Mockingbirds produce mockingbirds. So it's a truth that we've known and we've seen all throughout our lives. And the same thing applies to us in our lives in the way that we live our lives. What we sow, we shall reap. Galatians 6, beginning in verse 7. Galatians 6, beginning in verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now that's a truth that's carried throughout God's Word. God taught us this lesson God taught the children of Israel this lesson. It's as old as time. Now I want you to listen to God's word in Deuteronomy chapter 30. If you'd like to turn there, I've got several verses I'd like to read there. The law of Moses. God taught the children of Israel in the law of Moses what they should be doing, how they should live. And as I understand the law of Moses, I understand the laws are the first five books of the Bible. Those are the books of the law. And Moses is accredited for those books. And in those books, some of the things that are contained there were the Ten Commandments. But not only the Ten Commandments, they are the books of the law. It was the old uh, ceremonial laws and all those things took place in those five books. Deuteronomy chapter... 30 and beginning in verse 15 God's word said I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments now here's the reaping that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But, here's the planning again. But, if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. There's the reaping. There's the reaping. And that ye shall not prolong your days upon the earth, whether thou uh, passeth over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life. 
If you want to reap those blessings, if you want to have life and blessings, then we have to sow good works. If we want to have death and cursing, then we turn away from God and walk away from God and forsake God. There's the sowing. There's the reaping. That thou, it goes on to say, I call heaven and earth to record this day uh, against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey His voice and that thou mayest cleave unto Him for He is thy life. God is our life. He is our strength. He is our everything. And He's the length of thy days. You want to live long upon the face of the earth? You want to be blessed upon the face of the earth? Then serve God. Keep His commandments. Choose life. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now, <clears throat> God is telling the children of Israel what they must do. They're about to go into the land of Canaan. And if they want to live and they want to be successful and if they want to enjoy life there, they must follow after Him and keep His commandments. Now when we think about the children of Israel going into Canaan land, we think about the Gentiles entering into the kingdom of heaven. That's the likeness that we have. So if we want to enter into this kingdom of heaven, we've got to do what God told the children of Israel to do in order to enter into Canaan land. We've got to keep God's commandments. We've got to follow Him. We've got to choose life and do the things that God has told them to do in order to inherit, to inherit that life. You know, Joshua in, in chapter 24, he says this, Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That should be our decision. We want life. We want to live. We want uh, goodness in our land. We want goodness in our lives. We must serve God. Land of Canaan. Flowing with milk and honey. Blessings galore in that land. All they had to do was serve God, be faithful to Him, keep His commandments, walk in His ways, enter into that land. God would give it to them. And that's what we have to do if we're going to enter into that promised land, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We enter the same way because it's the same God. And He hasn't changed from then until now. We love the Lord our God. We walk in His ways. We keep His commandments. And that's how we do it. To go in and possess that land. If we sow goodness, what do we reap? We reap goodness. If we sow corruption, what do we reap? We reap evil. We reap corruption. We reap destruction. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. You can fool me, you can, I can fool you, but we cannot fool God, you see. God sees and knows everything. He knows the intents of our hearts. He knows the numbers of the hairs upon our head. God knows everything about us. He knew us before the world began. He loved us then. He loves us now. And He loves us so much, He's given us the formula that we need in order to receive His blessing. And that is be true and faithful to God in all things. You know, this principle of sowing and reaping was so important that Joshua got the children of Israel together and he made sure that they understood every word of the laws of God. Listen, Joshua 8.34 said, And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel. With the women, with the little ones, and the strangers that were conversant among them. 
Joshua made sure that the people of God knew what they had to do in order to receive God's bounty of blessings. And brethren, we're no different. We assemble ourselves every week in the house of God. We've heard the word of God. We know what God expects and requires of us if we're going to enter in to this kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven. Children of Israel were without excuse. And so are we. <coughs> Brethren, we've heard the word of God. We've been instructed. And we must follow God's commandments. Now, concerning, concerning giving, uh, giving doesn't just mean giving of your money. It doesn't just mean giving of your, to, your tithes to the church. It doesn't just mean giving to the poor. It means giving of your time giving of your talents, giving of uh, all that you have that you can share with others. But listen to the Word of God. It's talking about uh, your monetary. In Luke 6 and 38, God says this, Give, there's the sowing, and it shall be given unto you, there's the reaping. Give, and it shall be given unto you, Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye melt with all it shall be measured unto you. That word melt means measured out. For the same measure that you measure out, it shall be measured to you. If you give with a liberal heart, God will give to you with a liberal heart. See, there's that sowing and that reaping. It's that same lesson over and over throughout God's Word. You cannot outgive God. And, and don't say, well, I'm going to give so God will have to give to me because He's promised. That don't get it done. God says give from a free heart, from a loving heart. Give because you have, you have been blessed to give. Give to others. And God will see your heart God knows the right heart from the wrong heart. God will bless you if you give with the right heart. <clears throat> you know, Jesus taught a lesson in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 34, he said, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom, that the kingdom of God. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And then they answered, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed you? Uh, when thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it to one of these, the least of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. How do we serve Christ? How do we serve God? We serve God's people. We serve the poor. We serve the needy. We give of that which God has given us. Uh, if the Lord blessed you with the ability to teach others, you ought to be teaching others. If the Lord blessed you. I, I heard a preacher preach from this pulpit many years ago. And God says to those that have much, God didn't give it to us so that we would have much. God gave it to us to share so that others would have enough. Now, some would say, well, isn't that what the government's doing in trying to take away from the rich and give to the poor? No. God is not telling the federal government to take what you have earned away from you and give it to somebody else who does not deserve that money. God has charged you and I 
with the giving. And it's to be done with a pure heart, you see. We need to be doing that. It's not the government's job. It's the church's job. It's the people of God who are supposed to be giving. God did not command the government to do that. God commanded the people of God to give. So we need to give. Give to the poor. Uh, God is well pleased when we keep his word. You know, as I, as I read over that scripture and was talking about uh, a, a earlier scripture that I read when it was talking about giving good measure pressed down and shaken together and, and running over, I, as I read that yesterday, I thought about when, when I was young, we used to have to pick peas. Many of you have done that. And you pick peas and you throw them in a bushel and you pick peas and you throw them in a bushel. But I've known people that know how to stack peas. And... Uh, They'll lay them in there in rows. And when they get through, they got twice as many peas in a bushel than as if you buy them, if you just pick them and throw them in. And that's what God's saying. God's saying, I'm going to give you so much more. If you do, if you do what I say, uh, give to them, uh, uh, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. That's what I thought of was, was, was the peas. My daddy called us out of stack feet. Proverbs 28, 27 says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he hideth his eyes. But he, hi he that hideth his eyes shall have uh, many a curse. <clears throat> Brethren, as I, as I read these things, I'm not standing up here and saying that I'm not guilty of these things. Or I'm just as guilty as perhaps some of you. Sometimes we see people in need and we just walk away from those needs. The scripture says here in Proverbs 28, 7, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Uh, what, was, what was it that David said that I've been young and am now old and I've never seen the righteous? Uh, begging bread never seen the righteous begging bread you see God's faithful God's faithful to his people 2 Corinthians 9 6 says but this I say he which soweth sparingly listen now he which soweth sparingly you're giving but you're stingy he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully can't outgive God, in other words. God knows your heart. Draw nigh to God. So, sowing. And He will draw nigh to you. Reaping. Reaping. You see. Throughout the Word of God, sowing and reaping is so important. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he, the devil will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Are you ashamed of the Lord? Have you ever been ashamed of the Lord? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me, sowing, sowing, and my word of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And he shall come in his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. You know, the Apostle Paul was not ashamed of Jesus Christ, was he? In Romans 6, uh, uh, Romans, beginning in verse 16, I didn't write down the chapter, and I apologize for that. He says this, I am fully, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith unto faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. God's blessed us with His Word. He's taught us what to do. We don't need to be ashamed of Jesus, but we need to understand that whatever we sow, we will reap. The Scripture saith, whatsoever, Whosoever believeth in Him shall not be ashamed. You ever denied your love for Christ? 
I'm sure none of us have stood up and said, no, I don't love Jesus. Sometimes we walk away from things that we could use as an opportunity to prove our love for God. We walk away from those things when we actually need to endorse them. Stand with them. Peter said unto them in Matthew 26, 35, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. And likewise also said all his disciples. How many of them denied him? Twelve of them. All twelve denied Jesus Christ. None stood with him. Peter followed him, but he followed him afar. I believe Peter's heart was pure when he said, Lord, I'll die with you, but I'll never deny you. Sometimes we feel that way, don't we? We feel like we're willing to stand anywhere with God. And at that time, we are. You know, the Bible tells us about how when, when Peter denied Christ and how the cock crowed three times and he realized then that his master had told him before the cock crows thrice, you shall deny me. Oh, no, Lord, I'll not deny you. I will, I will die with you, but I'll not deny you. But when the opportunity came, he denied Christ. And when that cock, when that rooster crowed that third time, the scripture says that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Have you ever thought about what that look may have looked like I had? And I think Jesus looked at him with love. I don't think it was a scornful look. I think Jesus looked with him with looked to him with pity. Jesus loved him. And Jesus knows the weakness that we have in the flesh. And I believe Jesus looked with him looked to him with pity in his heart that this man Peter was not able to stand when he needed to stand. May God help us to stand. When time comes to stand, help us to stand. Matthew ten thirty two. Whatsoever therefore shall whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. As a child we learn the golden rule. The golden rule we think of as doing to others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto others. So, as you would have them reap, do unto you. I think, I think we could say this morning, do unto God as you would have God do unto you. Because you're going to reap what you sow. So we can do unto God the way we, we, we deal with God and, and His Word and His commandments and His people. I think God will deal with us and like that. Scripture says, Matthew 7, 4, 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do for you, do ye even so to them. That's where the golden rule comes from. For this is the law and the prophets. This is the law and the prophets. You ever felt like you just couldn't find God? You couldn't communicate God? God didn't hear your prayers and you just didn't know what was going on? I have. And I feel that many of you probably have been there from time to time. Didn't matter how hard you prayed, it just seemed like God didn't hear you and didn't answer your prayers. Couldn't find God. Listen. The Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Sowing and reaping.
sowing and reaping. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Not that he can't hear, not that he don't hear, but he won't hear your prayers, and he won't answer them. If you serve the Lord, you keep his commandments, and you're faithful to him, God will hear your prayers. Serve the Lord God. Bless his name. He will bless you. But you know, the choice is here. The choice is yours and the choice is mine. Every day when we get up, every day, in every situation, in every decision that we make, the choice is ours. Choose you this day whom you will serve. For what you sow today, you shall reap. So righteousness, so goodness, love, and kindness. I'll go back to where I started in Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. A truth that carries throughout the scripture. Lord, just bless our eyes to see and understand when God's talking about the children of Israel, when, when how, how God would judge that, that nation. These were the people of God. They were a peculiar people under God. God loved them above all the people on the face of the earth. He was their God. And He watched over them. And He blessed them. But when they turned away from God and sought Him no more and went after other gods, God chasten them. God judged them. God put them in captivity. Now those are his people. And God will bless us according to our works. May the Lord help us all. May the Lord help us all to hear the word of God this morning and realize that if we want God's blessings we must live for those blessings. We must we must Give ourselves in service to God. Must keep His commandments. When I was a boy growing up, my mom and dad, uh, especially my dad, was pretty strict. Well, he wasn't pretty strict. He was very strict. And I learned real quick when dad said, do something, you do it. And uh, you didn't, he didn't have to tell you twice. Uh, when dad told you to do something and you didn't do it, and he told you a second time, but this time he, he tore your backside up, and then you went and done it anyway. Now, I, I'm not real bright, but I'm not that dumb. I, I realized real quick that the best thing to do is go ahead and do it to start with, and because I'm going to have to do it anyway, and I just spare getting the whipping. So I just learned to do it anyway. And, uh, you know, w we learn to fear God and serve God a lot of times by the way we were trained, you know. And I, I used to think my dad was just too hard. But the older I get, the more I'm thankful for my dad and the hardness that he had because I realized it's helped me to fear God and keep his commandments. May the Lord help us all. It's my prayer for Christ's sake.